Did you know that as a Christian, you have the right and the power to command angels to fight on your behalf? Many Christians have fallen into the deception of believing that the ministry of angels is a thing of the past. They think this way because they wrongly assume that since we have received the Holy Spirit, we no longer need angelic intervention. But this, in fact, is not true at all. Jesus' death on the cross did not put an end to the angelic ministry. In fact, throughout and after Jesus' ministry, the angelic ministry was still very active and will continue to be active and vital till when Jesus comes. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2, the Bible says, Be not be forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. This means you still receive angelic visitations today, even as a believer. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 14, we read, Are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? This verse is not talking about Old Testament believers. It is talking about children of God. It reveals that angels are not distant, uninvolved entities, but rather they are spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. In fact, a large portion of the book of Revelation revealed unto John was revealed by an angel. In Revelation 1 verse 1 the Bible says, The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. This means that angels have a duty to assist you, otherwise they will have no use. They're like your support team, ready to be deployed at God's command for your benefit. In Psalm 91 verses 9 to 11, the Bible says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. In Psalm 34 verse 7 the Bible says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. This means God always assigns his angels to you, especially when you fear him. When Paul and Silas found themselves behind prison bars, it wasn't a human being who came to their rescue. It was an angel sent by God. When Peter was arrested, facing possible execution, it was an angel too that miraculously led him out of his cell. These were all after the Holy Spirit had already come upon them. Also think about the story of Cornelius, a man on the brink of salvation. God didn't appear to him through the Holy Spirit. Instead, he dispatched an angel to guide Cornelius towards the truth. Even the great apostle Paul, when he was about to perish in a ship, God sent an angel to tell him no one will perish. In Acts 8 verse 26, the Bible says, The angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza. This again was after Philip had already been filled with the Holy Spirit, but we can see that God continued to use angels to do their part. So to think that angels no longer have a role to play is quite frankly unbiblical. Angels also serve as messengers of God. In the book of Luke chapter 1, we see the angel Gabriel bringing messages to both Zacharias and Mary about the births of John the Baptist and Jesus. Even today, God may use angels to communicate important messages or warnings to his people. In the book of Acts chapter 12, we see the church praying fervently for Peter's release from prison, and God sends an angel to miraculously free him. The angels were always there, but it took spiritual eyes to perceive them. In the same way, there may be angelic activity surrounding you right now, engaged in spiritual warfare on your behalf, even though you can't see it with your physical eyes. This is why we shall be praying that God releases his angels to fight on your behalf. There is a lot going on in the spirit realm, which requires angelic intervention. All they need is for you to give them a command through prayers. The reason many believers do not receive angelic assistance is because they do not know the difference between the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of angels. You see, God's kingdom is very structured. Both the ministry of angels and the ministry of the Holy Spirit are not competing ministries. They don't compete with each other, but they are complementary ones. The Holy Spirit indwells inside believers, guiding, comforting and empowering us from within, Meanwhile, angels, on the other hand, are external agents who work externally and are sent by God to protect, deliver, and assist you in various ways. The Holy Spirit focuses more on your internal aspects of building your relationship with God, 
while angels focus on external aspects of your walk with God. For example, the Holy Spirit can convict you of sin, but an angel cannot do so. The Holy Spirit lives inside of a believer, but an angel cannot do so. The Holy Spirit knows the future, but angels do not have an all-sufficient knowledge about the future. Think of it like this. The Holy Spirit is like an internal GPS, guiding you from within, while angels are like a heavenly escort service, providing external support and protection. Both are essential, and both are gifts from God to help us navigate our earthly journey and spiritual warfare. In the book of Psalms, chapter 91, verses 11 to 12, we read, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. In Matthew 4, verse 11, the Bible tells us, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. This came after Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. In Luke 22, verse 43, the Bible says, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. This occurred during Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before his arrest and crucifixion. Remember, Jesus had already been filled with the Holy Spirit by this time, and yet he still needed angels. But don't fall into the trap of worshipping angels or praying to them directly. The Bible is clear that our worship and prayers should be directed to God alone. Angels are servants of God and us. They are not to be worshipped or petitioned independently of God. In the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 18, Paul warns against the worship of angels, saying, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Instead, we are to pray to God, asking him to send his angels to assist us. This aligns with Jesus' own words in the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 53, where he says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? Jesus knew he had access to angelic assistance through prayer to the Father, and so do we. But even though angels are available to us, their assistance often needs to be activated through prayers. When you face spiritual attacks, you have the right and the responsibility to ask God to release his angels to fight on your behalf. They are, in a sense, your servants, commissioned by God to aid you in your spiritual battles. You cannot fully function in your earthly mission without the assistance of these heavenly beings. As we conclude this teaching portion, I want to encourage you to open your spiritual eyes to the reality of angelic ministry. You are not alone in your spiritual battles. You have not only the indwelling Holy Spirit, but also an army of angels at your disposal. Don't neglect this powerful aspect of your spiritual inheritance. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. If you love our videos, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.